Welcome to our Compose Cast, where we discuss productivity, self hosting, career professionalism, and innovative technology. Here to bring you the latest from the open source ecosystem and beyond is yours truly, Andrew Syriac, and with me is my co host, Jack Moore. How are you doing today, Jack? I am doing well over here. I uh, how are you doing over there? I've been running into little snags, just just up and down. Uh, so, the first I, I think that you experience is that for some reason right now, and I haven't even looked into this. I just kind of confirmed it before the the show. Though, uh, journal cuddle uh, is is broken on new Ubuntu installs uh, via Digital Ocean. So I don't know what they've done, what they've they've updated, and it's weird because the files there. But Journal Cuddle can't read it. Now, a restart seems to fix the problem of, of um, system D-Journal D. So I, I, I know it's set up correctly. There's some initiation, though, that is, that is going haywire. So i got to f- figure out what that is or, or contact the people who, who can let me know what that is. Right. So now our deploys, which we have so ingeniously used Journal Cuddle to look for the conclusion of the cloud in its script, are, are, are now breaking because journal cuddle is now broken so there's it's something right it's there's always, always something. something there's always something right there's always administrative work because there's always something um even when the administrators um administrate too much and delete production instances um <laughs> you know that being case, the case we, we got to we got to have an impromptu restore test uh recently and we got to to restore the uh, compositional enterprises um, R compose instance, which hosts our run deck uh, instance, our service, and our book stack, book stack, board. and yep, oh, yeah. yep, all that. That's basically all of our services. All yeah. of that. Yeah. So that trial by fire with yeah. that one, if you ask me. Uh, I was I was happy about that. You know, being able to at least go through. The process of doing that and and testing that out and well having already tested it having that testing that out <laughs> already, having already tested that having a a instance where it was you know very important so um having done that i was i was happy that it, it came out the way it did so uh i think all we lost were about a day and a half worth of data um yeah and yep. and that is i mean i'm not going to go into backup here because we already went over it but the the ability to restore is kind of broken up into two different metrics, right? It's when is the latest time you can restore from, and how long is it going to take that restore to come up? Um, and I think where we really win is how long it takes that restore to come up, right? We may not have had a, a, a day's worth of data, right? But we were up within an hour, hour and a half, I think it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I had a I had a do a couple manual tweaks just because of course we do custom stuff but uh all in all i was i was really happy with getting that back up yeah that's always a little bit frightening to see that in production instance has been deleted but good to know restore backup and restore are working because trust me backups are not restores just because you have the data doesn't mean you can successfully restore from it but getting into i think the intro here uh on top of those, we have <laughs> what the government calls now the biggest seizure of assets, I think is what it's now been declared. Um, I don't know if everyone remembers the Bitfinex, Bitfinex hack um, back in 2016, 2017. Well, sure enough, that couple was just busted, I believe, in New York. And you're never going to believe it, but the guy... <laughs> the password had his private as the private key to the wallet just it was hanging out there i think he had two copies of it one was just hanging out in the cloud just in a folder and then one was just on his desktop on unencrypted just hanging out unencrypted you know nothing fancy about it just hanging out ready for someone to grab it um but they were busted just recently within the past week um and we'll see where it goes from here. Honestly, if you asked me why he wasn't encrypting it, <laughs> yeah, because I couldn't be able to give you a good answer. I really would not be able to give you a good answer. There's there's a lot of talk, especially around. I, I don't remember who it was, it was this case, but you know, a lot of different cases where Bitcoin does get seized. Right the the 
legitimacy of this as a, you know, anti-censorship measure gets called into question. You're like, all right, well, if it can be seized, how is this secure? It's like, well, it's not like they broke the Bitcoin protocol, right? right. It's that someone literally had the keys sitting, you know, under their front entry mat. You know, that's that's not a seizure. That's, you know, a criminal being dumb. You know, that's <laughs> it's a Darwin award right there. So... <laughs> So, yeah, and, and I can't remember if you were, you know, talking about if they kept their keys on, on like, a, a cloud um, or or not, you know, if it was if it was in some kind of, like, repository or something like that. Um, but, I mean, that would be something that you would expect uh, authorities to have access to anyway, so you'd want to do something and click encrypt that client side uh, so that right. you're, you're not just throwing that up uh, into someone else's computer. Right. And someone else's computer that they may take away from you, uh, given any change in whim, just be- really just because they feel like, yeah, it, right? I mean, just because they feel like we it. just saw and, and actually link in here in the intro, you know, Google uh, took away the legacy G Suite accounts, you know, the, 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 the free accounts that they've been getting given out since, you know, the early, you know, mid 2000s up to like 2012. Right from from 2006 to 2012, anyone could sign up for a Google account with a custom domain, um, you know, and a lot of people did for you know non technical users because that was Google. You know, Google is something that is very easy to work with for non technical users. Now you and I, we can go to Name Silo, right. Namecheap, we can yeah. go to you know a, a DNS registrar, register that, um, go to a DNS uh, provider, and 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 put in uh, our details there and we can we can host that because we know we understand how that works right people who don't are going to use these types of services um, and google used to offer them for free um, they no longer offer them for free but they were grandfathered in and now a lot of people are are understanding that they were no longer grandfathered in <laughs> <laughs> 10 years later 10 years down the road uh hey by the way that free account we gave you uh yeah we're getting rid of that and you have until late june you know and maybe to, this is a sign that google is in fact not trawling through your email in order to sell ads to you maybe they are losing subscription services so they need to get you off that free account right um maybe they're just trying to pinch pennies i don't know i'm not going to speculate all i know is that once again they are rescinding an offer that you know a lot of people rely on i mean if you look at the um the google stadia release right and and that's something i linked to here as well but you know the the city release got not not yanked right but at least they are they are rebranding it and deprioritizing it right and they're not going to be working on it you know and they sold a lot of subscriptions to this this stuff right this is something that they really hyped up this is something that they said Come and we will take care of your gaming needs. Just like before, they said, come and we will take care of your email and hosting provider needs, right? And time and time and again, we see that's just not the case. Now, and, and you had an interesting take, you know, them being an, an advertising company, not a hosting that's what company. they are anymore. Yep. Yeah. Anymore, you look at them, they have gone, just name a messaging service. Mm. I think they've gone through mm. 12 since they've been a company, since 2001. They've gone through 12, I think the number, like, think about that allo voice all those all those services just think you're like oh hey we migrate yeah we migrated our entire team to x and (laughs) the provider just pulling the rug on it's it's a rug pull basically at that at that level it's just like oh hey by the way we no longer provide support it's like dude we just bought this a year ago you're gonna make me transition everyone over one more time so i don't know i if you ask me and i think this came up in discussions around their Oh man, what is it? Anti, uh, or what is it? The one the mega core, the antitrust, or no? I'm, yeah, is it antitrust? is it antitrust? Yeah, it, antitrust. It's like where they break up all the co- yeah. big companies, yeah. big organizations. Yeah. Um, they basically said, all right, if it split into do two businesses, it would be the products business and the AdSense business. So it's like, oh well. Good luck with the products one because they can't hold on or create a, yeah. a pro- they can't they can't, their products suck. <laughs> End of the day. End of the day. <laughs> you know, and and I look at um, the the recommendation I I really uh, liked from leaddev dot uh, com. I, I have I have that linked in here, um, and it's talking about how to 
embrace operational transparency, right? And and the way that you conduct yourself matters, right? We, we talk about agile. We talk about working within teams. We talk about, you know, how to empower people and, and you know, be empathetic and stuff. But how we present ourselves to the outside world matters just as much, if not more, right? You know, open source gives you know, creators the ability, they say here, to accelerate development, learn from community of experts, and incorporate thoroughly reviewed code, right? So we we have all those freedoms and it, it gives us this, this benefit, right? But what do we get from operational transparency, right? What do we get from putting our our form and, and function out there, right? So they, they have a couple things. Uh, the ones that stood out to me when we think about in terms of, you know, fang companies, you know, Apple, Google, uh, Netflix, Amazon, right? They, they talk about, you know, what are the project's affiliations, right? Um, and, you know, are these run by nefarious you know, well, Google used to not be evil, so I couldn't I couldn't call them out on that before. But you know, who knows what they're doing right now with with affiliating, and especially you know with their AdSense part of the company, right? Right. What? Right. How are they getting their claws into these different projects? Right? How how are they how are they using these in a way such that you know the original project maintainers wouldn't even necessarily be aware of it or, or have have intended that right um, so and and you know where is it where is it going right because once you're affiliated with something I mean anymore if you're affiliated with Google you're like all right well this will last about a year and a half and then you know don't count on me totally. to do anything. Totally. Basically, every single Google pro- project anymore is a pump and dump. I, you know, I don't. We're gonna migrate you. No, it's like uh, we're gonna migrate you until you decide. All right, I'm. Done. Yeah. Like I, 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 yeah. I can't do this. <laughs> I'm tired of migrating users. Why put yourself through the hassle? Yeah, exactly. You know, and and another one she brings up, as I just said, is is the funding sources, right? Um, and sure. and yeah, you know, where 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 are you getting this this income, which is gonna be driving the direction of the project and the future initiative and the prioritization, right? Because if if apparently Stadia isn't making money, you see it, you know, in the words of our technica, it's getting deprioritized. Right. What what does that mean? Pulling funding? It's no one can work on this anymore? Is that what that means? Yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be shuffling no resources. Yeah. I hate that right. word for people. You know, shuffling resources. Right. You're gonna you're gonna right. be moving people to a different project when they've they you brought them on because they're gaming enthusiasts because they love the idea of you know having this kind of streaming type of service uh, uh, around and 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 you're gonna put them on something completely different, right? Because you're you you can't put enough advertising in it or or, or what, right? And and it doesn't seem like a lot of people really know. So. I'm sure eventually we're going to understand why Google is the way they are. But right now, you know, if if you're looking for a project that has stated goals and a stated direction and a, you know, solid funding model, our Compose has all of that in spades. Yep. Right. So we are looking for this to be sustainable until I'm no longer around at least. That's how I yeah I was gonna say that's I'm in the same boat. There's 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 nothing so disruptive unless it's the internet literally ble- being blown away, right? That would really interrupt what we're doing here. This is something that we're in it for the long haul. Yeah, I was gonna say it's gonna take a lot to get us away. I, I think we've been going at it now three years. Mm-hmm. I think we started the podcast two years yep. ago. So if anything, we're just gonna keep chugging along. Yep, and if you want to be a part of that, go to rcompose.com, sign up for the mailing list. It's the number one thing to do. Number two thing to do is to continue listening to this very podcast that you are currently listening to, um, in which we discuss Firefly 3. Oh, actually, first we have a couple uh, community updates, no? We have a couple quick ones yeah they're very quick here so i'm not going to go through uh, as i have in the past i'm not going to go through the release notes on these projects basically i'm just going to give a high level overview if you're interested and want to learn more they are linked in the show notes so vault warden 1.24.0 is out uh dollar bar 15 was relayed the firefly 3 data importer i think is at 0.8.0 and wordpress is 
just getting ready for 5.9. If, if not, I think it's already out here, uh, and they're, they're just getting ready for it. So I, I linked in uh, basically what the, ma- the past month in WordPress looked like, but all of these are going to be in the show notes. I don't, I'm not going to go through the release notes. There's nothing, nothing major to discuss on these. The one thing I would note is that the data importer, um, I had talked to the maintainer uh, of Firefly 3 as we had covered last week, uh, and he had pointed out that the data importer is, in fact, a separate service. So that is something that we can look to introduce if anyone is super concerned about that. Um, luckily, the way we spin up Docker containers, this would just be yet another one. So right. no fear that this would be fairly painless um, to to achieve. But 